Hello, my name is Alec. I'm the technical manager at Quellfire. Today's burning question episode, we are actually going to be looking at customers' burning questions. So the very first question I wanted to look at is one that we're often sent is, oh, you've sent a flexible wall detail, but I've got a rigid wall. The reason why we do this is typically we will always test on a plasterboard wall system. The reason why we can do this is the scope of application in the BSEN 1366 part three uh, field of application allows test evidence from flexible walls to be used on rigid walls that are the same thickness. So there's no reason why we would test all of these solutions on both a plasterboard wall and then a rigid wall because this evidence covers that. On our details, you'll see on the title, it will say flexible and rigid walls. And in the additional information column on the left hand side, we put the rule that's from the standard there just so you can cover uh, uh, any uh, building control questions. Buildings are often made up of a variety of different supporting construction types. One of those uh, commonly is hollow core planks. I've got an example here. They're precast concrete with these hollow openings. And we're often asked by our customers, do you have service penetration solutions for these? We do at Quellfire, and the reason why we've done that is because we've done specific testing on this type of floor system. Most commonly, other manufacturers will only test solid concrete floor, and there's no scope in the standard to allow that test evidence to be automatically transferred to this type of floor system. So we went out and have tested specific details for this. You can find these on our website, or you can contact our technical team because we've got a variety of different applications using our QF2 compound, and we do have a, a solution using our FireVap. CPVC sprinkler pipes are very common on projects. They're used in a variety of different applications. They're a great uh, product, but they do have chemical compatibility issues and requirements. Uh, so at Quellfire, we have two products that have been approved. We have our Quellstop HPE sealant, as you can see here, here just directly around the uh, CPVC pipe. And we also have applications where it's sleeved. And we have very recently had the QIF fire sleeve approved uh, for Lubrizol sprinkler pipes. The reason why you need to make sure you're using the right product is these pipes are going to be uh, used for sprinkler applications. So they're going to be full of water. They have a lot of mechanical stress and any um, product that is used that's not compatible could damage and make the pipe uh, weak and then they could burst. And that's going to cost a lot of damage um, and money uh, on your projects. So it's important that you check which products have been approved. So if you go to Lubrizol website, they have a compatibility register and you will see our Quellstop HPE sealant and QIF sleeve approved on there. You also have an incompatibility register to show you any products that are not compatible. The same if you go to Spears, they are another manufacturer of CPVC, they will have um, a list as well that you can refer to. Very often, uh, we get asked the question about what do we do when we have pipes going through the uh, application at an angle. Again, it's not good practice. Typically, all your services should go in the correct way as that's how we fire tested it. Our R&D team have worked hard and have tested a number of different services at angles. And we've just got some examples here. So we do have a solution for plastic pipes, both in a um, letterbox application and a patris. And this is quite simply using our quell stop HPE sealant to a full depth uh, through the, uh, the bat. Um, metal pipes that are either uninsulated, so that means there's no insulation going through the bat, or they have insulation like this rock fiber that requires no um, closure device. We've also got evidence through bat and patris and also a floor detail. And then we have the very common uh, sleeved gas pipes. As you can see here, this is a version of trap pipe in a sleeve. Usually these are bundled lots together, uh, but we have done a solution where they're going into the wall at an angle again. This is using our HPE sealant, full depth. All of these applications can be found on our website and we're happy to send them out if you require. One of the things commonly being misunderstood in the industry is spacings. Um, I have covered this in a knowledge hub piece, but I thought I'd do another breakdown in a bit more in depth. So when we're talking about spacings, there are three things we're talking about. The first thing we're talking about, if we're talking about multi-service penetrations in a letterbox or a Patris application, for example, is you'll, you'll need to know the spacing um, from the edge of the aperture, so the edge of the opening, 
to the edge of the fire stop seal if one's been used. So here we've used HPE, so it's from the edge of the HPE to the edge of the aperture. If you're using wraps or something or a QRS fire sleeve, it's from the edge of the fire stop seal to the edge of the aperture. So on some of our details, you will see zero mil spacing. That doesn't mean zero mil from the service. It means zero mil from the, you know, the HPE, the sealant, um, that side of things. The next spacing requirement is going to be spacings between services. Now, as you can see here with our QRS, you're allowed zero mil between the QRS fire sleeves. So you can have multiple ducts stacked together, either horizontally, vertical. However, the space from a plastic duct to, we have here an insulated metal pipe, needs to be a minimum of 50 mil. And that's as per our evidence. If you haven't done a test of multi-services, uh, like we have here at Quellfire, you have to have a minimum of 100 mil. And this is as per section 13.7 of the BSEN 1366 part three, um, fire resistant test standard. One of the other things that gets very confused is when we're talking about spaces between apertures in a wall. So if we just go slightly lower, these details here are what we call direct to wall seals. So that means you've put a hole in the wall, you've put the service and then you've typically sealed it. Here we've got some sealant applications. So between the edge of this aperture, this opening in the, the wall to the edge of this one, there must be a minimum of 100 mil as per section 13.7. However, what we always advise here is please speak to your wall manufacturer because they may have their own requirements and may want a larger space. And if they require a larger space between apertures, in my opinion, that trumps the uh, section 13.7. So make sure you always check with them as well. Something that's catching out a lot of projects that I'm working on currently is the understanding about first service supports. What I mean by first service support is this is the um, first service support, obviously by the name, but it's where you have it positioned um, from the face of the supporting construction on both sides of the wall or on below the floor or above the floor. So here you can see just some first service supports here supporting our um, services and the distance away should be no more than what's tested or less. And what I mean by that is at Quellfire, we've tested our first service supports at 400 mil. So you can have this away from this support construction, a maximum of 400 mil, or you can have it closer. You cannot be further away. Other manufacturers may have different um, test evidence, so that they might actually be a lot closer. So it's very important that you check what their first service support was when they did the fire test. Now for the MEs out there, they may get a, a information from sort of the plastic pipe manufacturer and all that, that they can have service supports at further distances, but they're not taking in, into consideration anything about fire stopping. The rules set out in BSEN 1366 part three, which is the fire resistant test standard for services, state that the first service support must be as tested or closer. It can't go against this. One of the hot topics our technical team are receiving a lot of questions about at the moment is shaft walls and uh, mainly how can we uh, fire stop service penetration through these types of supporting construction. What I mean by a shaft wall, so if you have a look here, it's usually an asymmetric wall, meaning that you have two or three boards one side of the stud and usually just one board either on the inside or the outside of the stud. Uh, typically these walls are used in shafts, hence the name. They're installed from one side only. So Quellfire have done some recent testing where we've done a few service penetrations where we've installed this product uh, from one side only. But one of the things we had to do, as you can see from this picture here, is we have to do a fire test where the, the wall is positioned in both directions because it's asymmetric. If you need any information on this because it's quite new, please contact our technical team and we'll be very happy to assist you. One question we get asked, but thankfully not too much anymore, is can we use PU foams or fire rated foams, pink foam, whatever the name you want to call it, around service penetration? There's just some examples here on the screen. The simple answer is no, you cannot. Uh, these types of foams have generally been tested for very small linear gaps. That's just gaps between usually concrete and concrete. And when I say small, I'm talking usually 10 mil or less um, in a particular application. The problem where, why this was used is because people are generally just reading product data sheets or labels and not actually reading the test evidence. 
these PU phones are typically would have been tested to BS476 or BSEN1366 part four, and it's that part four that should give it away. That's a linear gap test. When we're talking about service penetrations, it's the BSEN1366 part three. So make sure you're using a product that's been tested for a service penetration. That brings us to the end of the first um, part of answering our customers' questions. But as the slide says here, it doesn't have to end here. You will find lots of videos already on our YouTube channel, but some of these questions that we've answered in this video and a lot more can be found here in our Knowledge Hub. So if you go to our website, go to the technical drop-down and go into the Knowledge Hub, you'll see loads of different questions that our technical team and have put some answers to there. So uh, thank you very much for listening to me on this episode. Um, the contact details will appear on the screen and reach out to us and we'll be happy to help.